dressing the frame is quite an adventure. It is a series of small things to do and you need to be quite precise in every single thing. And if everything comes great together, you will have a, a good tension on the fabric and you will be able to work with the tambour hook. If it doesn't work out, it is because you cannot get the tension right. So just follow the steps that I'm showing you. I will put the camera to my hands so you can see exactly what I do. Good luck. In a perfect world, your frame might look like this. Um, large wooden pieces with holes in it and then the smaller wooden pieces with a gliding slope like this. Plus you'll have a screw like this one with the block and a metal plate and a knob. This works very great but uh, your frame might look a little different. I'm just showing you how I like to have the frame. So what we are going to do, we are going to take our piece of fabric, which is silk organza, you can look through. This is not quite white, but it is the lightest color I have at the moment. It is like a soft peach pinky color, still very light. And then I take one of the large frame parts with the twill tape on it and I pin the fabric about in the middle with a few pins. Usually about five is uh, enough, but use as much as you like. And what is important to keep in mind is that your the, the fabric is right along the side of the twill tape, so you don't so, so that you will get it on the grain line exactly. Make sure it is smooth, flat, but don't pull while doing this. Just give room to the fabric to do its work. Right? So this is how it looks now. Then the next thing is you take threads, it should be very strong. So I have like this thread which is used for making buttonholes with a buttonhole machine. Let me see, it is 40. Can you see it? Is it oops, it's 40. Um, I like it, but you can use other materials as well. Filagant would work or whatever you have which is stronger than the normal uh, sewing thread. Then I take twice the length of my fabric, one, two, oh. I'll cut this off, twice the length of the fabric plus some extra, so one, two, plus some extra, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to sew this with a double thread, yes, and I do it like this, I will pick my needle, I use an embroidery needle because it's easy to thread because of the large hole and it is quite strong and this twill tape is quite heavy so if I would use a, a fine needle it will, would bend and that's what I don't want. So now we have a double thread. I make a knot at the end. I go through the loop twice, make a nice knot like this and then I cut it off, keeping a small, let me see, a small, small piece, not too much. So now I'm ready and I will start sewing. So here is the edge of my fabric. I will pin right into the twill tape next to the fabric and then in the fabric, get it through. And then I have a knot here, but a knot is not always completely safe. So I will go back and make a stitch at the same spot and pull. Yes, it's just like that. Now, what is important now? One thing that you make a straight line. The twill tape might help because it has some lines in it. So you, you might want to do it on the other side so you can see the twill tape. That's 
perfectly fine. So if I would do so, it would be even easier for you to see. And then the second thing that is very important is that we are using a basting stitch. So it's just up, up and down, up and down, nothing fancy, but don't make your stitches too long because then the tension will be divided over a few stitches and the thread might uh, get damaged. So make stitches that are no longer than one centimeter to make sure that the tension will be right. So if you follow just a line on your twill tape with stitches from one side to the other, I will show you what to do at the end. Okay, so here I come at the ends. Almost, almost the end. And here I will go up next to the fabric. So the fabric ends here and the needle will go up just after it. And I will make a stitch over the edge of the fabric and back. Oops. And at that spot, at the finish of the fabric, I will make three stitches on top of each other. And then I will cut off the remaining of the thread and because I measured it I just have this small piece left. I always throw my threads on the floor because at the end of the day I will clean it up and then I don't have to bother the whole day about all the little threads. I am the easygoing one. <laughs> so now you see that it looks like this. All equal stitches you see and in a straight line. So what to do now? This is the one I did. The fabric goes like this and the tape is that direction. I place the other large piece uh, next to the other one but facing each other. So here the trail tape is, this is on this side and here it is on this side. They face each other, you see? And what I will do, the upper part, here the fabric is attached, I will go under and over and I will just pin it here to make sure I have it at the right I have it the right way because you get confused if you have to attach it how it will work. So just attached with one needle I will be able to switch it all over so I have the side that is not sewn towards me that is this one. And now I have to make sure that it is at exactly, that the fabric is exactly at the same, same height as with the other side. So I make sure these are even, not always the twill tape will be even, but with my frame it is. This will be even, then I have the fabric that is attached already, it starts here. And I match it with my other fabric. It is almost the same, but I will match it right now. Oh, this is quite a tricky thing to do. Just stay calm, Saskia. Just stay calm. Okay. Check, check, double check. Yes, this is right. Now you might think I will just pin it like that and finish it, but that's not how we do it. What we do now, we, let me just move a little bit. We make sure the, these are equal and then we match this side the same way we did the first one. Why? There is a reason for it because if you have a fabric and you just pin it how it falls, it will fall at the first side, it will fall a little bit more easy and on the other side it will stretch a little bit more and then you have the first side equal and the other side they have a difference. So you just make both ends the same and then you divide. So here I have now a little bit more fabric it seems like but I just divide it over the whole stretch and make it beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
all because I want later to be able to put tension on this fabric and it won't work if these are not at the same spot. It really won't work. So once I, they are in place, I've checked it on both sides. I attach this side the same way I did with the first one. Okay, so once you are finished with sewing the fabric to the long sides, we are ready to start putting everything together. So now I, it is just like a folding magic. You see, I fold it back, 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 and now it looks like this. And I do the same with the other sides. How exactly I will fold it and how the fabric will be depends on your own taste. So you can do it like this, I like this, but it could also be like this, but it helps if it is the same at both sides. So I prefer this right now. So you put it like this and then you have the short sides that will be attached to the side. There are some specifics to tell about this project, the first one. This screw has a block underneath, you see? This block needs to go in the short side because if you do it like this, the screw will go through, but the block isn't going anywhere once it is in. It blocks the screw and that makes the frame so strong. So however you put it, make sure that the screw is in the short slider and that if you put it in the large frame you can use um, one of the holes in it and then on the other side you first put in the round the, the this protects the wood and then the knob so that's the procedure how you go um, what i like to do is step by step um, First screw everything in place about and then I start looking how I put the tension exactly on it. Then one thing, you may choose where you put the short um, pieces because there are, let me show you, there are several holes here. And the farther it is, the bigger your fabric could be, that's important, but also the more tape you will need to, to attach to the sides. So if you, are, uh, you, if you don't have that many meters, you just put this as close to the fabric as possible. At least there should be like eight or 10 centimeters to be able to fold the twill. So that's about it. So I will go for the middle. I think that will work. I like to put this one at the bottom. Then the screw goes in. Oops. All times always a little juggle here and then I screw this one in place you see it's like that and I do the same at the other side I choose the same hole make sure the the screw goes in completely so the block will work then put on the round metal piece and then the knob so this is the first side then I will go to the other side and do the same over there. I will move it a little bit. So I will put the short frame at the bottom, then first go with the screw through the small wooden frame, then place the round and then attach the knob. Now one last piece, I use the third one, at least make sure that at on one side you use the same hole, it can be different from the other side, that's okay, but then you, it will be straight, otherwise it will go like this, right? So let me place it a little bit further so you have a good view. Now the fabric is still loose and the knobs are not quite finished. So what I do, 
I start with the site that is closest to me and I will make this one real, real tight. Then I will measure how far it is from one side and we'll match this one and make it the same. You could measure it with a centimeter, of course, but I'm always like doing it about. <laughs> I'm not the most precise person. So now I'm going to push this a little bit further and then I will go to the other side and push this one a little bit further as well. And here I will really stretch it and then I will go back to this side and I will stretch this one as well. So now you have the magic. Look, you see the stripes in the fabric? It's because of the tension. So now there is tension in this fabric, but it is like wrinkled. And that's because the tension is only in one direction and that is from this side to this side. So what we do now, we are going to use the separate twill tapes and we will pin them to the sides and make sure they will stretch like this and then the fabric will become flat even and have even more tension on it. And these twill tapes, um, I use two pieces of five meters but I use them time and again and of course they become a little bit dirty after some time. So then in between uh, separate embroidery jobs I sometimes just throw them in the washing machine to get them clean again. It's very easy, but it is, like you see, it's very soft feeling cotton and very flexible. I like that. So what I do, I take a lot of pins without a glass head, just the old fashioned pins like this. Oh, I put the pins on the fabric. I just place the twill tape like this. Oh, you don't see it. <laughs> I place the twill tape alongside the fabric and um, far away from me and I'll work towards myself. Just do what you like, but that's how I like it. And then this is very important. You go in the fabric and out and then in again and out again. So you make like two stitches with one pin. You place the pin about two centimeters from the side to make sure that the fabric will not rip apart. So then you have your twill tape, which is together like this. <laughs> that is, comes in quite handy. And then you go over the sidebar, under, under and over. And now you stretch the twill tape, but you don't pull too much. You don't give it too much tension. You just make sure it is straight. And then you place another pin. The pin should be like on the grain line, about two centimeters from the side. One and two. So the first time you went over and then under. So what you do now, you go under and then over. So you do it over, under, under, over, over, under, under, over. And that's what you do all the time. Later you will understand why that comes in handy. So we came over, so we go over and now we go under. And you just place the twill tape next to the other one. If you are short of twill tape, you push them aside a little bit like this, but oops, but normally it will go like this.
I sometimes feel very clumsy when I do this because the pins drop to the floor or this goes like like this or all kinds of things happen but yeah the more you do it the better it works and one day it works ooh, even better than the other day and in the beginning it's quite normal if you need really two hours to do this to finish this task and sometimes you are just ready in half an hour it depends on some practice so we don't want the twill tape to to turn or anything so like this we don't want that so we make it flat in out in out Okay, so the ooh, like this. This will be the last one. So in, out, in, out. You push from under a little bit up to get the pin through the fabric. So now you have this extra. You don't cut it off because the next time you might need it. So you just put it under the twill tape and you pin a pin through it all to keep it in place. Now we want to do it on the other side, so I like to turn my frame. And do exactly the same as on the other side, with one exception. Now we put on real tension and it makes everything you do a little bit more complicated. So I start with the first twill tape in out in out then I go over under and now I start pushing uh, pulling really on the twill tape and then I need to keep it in place while I'm getting the pin through like this so I do the same thing as on the other side but once I need to do the pin, I pull and then place the pin in, out, in, out, over, under, pull, in, out, in, out. And you continue to the other side. As you can see, I'm finished now with the whole procedure and it looks quite straight so you can see if the, the uh, grain of the fabric is like perpendicular to the uh, framework. It is. If not, you might always change, uh, adapt it a little bit by pushing the frame. Then one more important thing about the frame and everyday use. Um, because of the circumstances in the air and the humidity, uh, the fabric becomes looser in the frame. So it is a good practice to unscrew one button every day before you start, pull a little and screw it back again and it will make the fabric tighter. That helps with the tambour a lot. I hope you like this procedure and you understand every step of it. Just do it, just practice, it will become easier by doing. And um, it is the foundation of your work with the tambour hook. The tambour hook needs the tambour. Tambour is the French word for drum. So your fabric needs that tension, that firmness to get through with the hook and get out again as well. Okay, bye bye.